Hey guys, Corey here, the art archaeologist. So <laughs> I'm taking my leaves, some of my leaves that I wanted to freeze. I ended up having a little bit more than I thought I did. So I'm going to go ahead and try a different way to eco dye. And this is how this is starting out. This is some muslin fabric. You can use anything natural. And then I did this page of leaves and and I'm going to take this paper. Now I squirted this uh, fabric down with my alum water mixture. And I've got a pro tips video where I go over this in depth and how to mix it and a bunch of other eco dyeing tips too. Then I take my Canson mixed media paper. And this comes in nine by 12. I cut them down to eight and a half by 11 so I can scan them. And then I'm just putting this in here, no dye, no nothing, just soaked in alum water. And then I'm going to go ahead, look at this gigantic leaf. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm going to make sure there's plenty, plenty of alum water. And then I'm even going to spritz the leaf with it as well. And then I'm just going to go on like this till I get the whole thing together. And this time I am not using grates. So I want to get to that point and then I'll show you how I'm going to wrap this up. I actually real quick just was watching a video and uh, watching YouTube and this eco dyeing video popped up in my feed and I will link it below. I'll find it while I'm editing this. But um, I saw this guy. I'll do it in this way. So this is not my idea. I just wanted to try it out and see how it goes. So I'll be back. Okay, real quick here, I want to um, add some chamomile to this kit and I'm going to add a tiny bit of hibiscus too. I just can't bear to not put something in it. And then I'm going to make another bundle and I mixed up, I've been really wanting this rust color and I mixed up two parts sunshine orange to one part brown. So I did a lot less orange and a little more brown to get it more rusty. And here's how it's looking so far. This is a shout out to you, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl's been wanting me to show how I do the dye specifically. So um, I wanted to go ahead and take this opportunity to show you guys since here I am doing more eco dyeing. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. By the way, guys, this tub I'm using is a, a kitty litter tub from Walmart. Just so you know, I'm not going to be doing the grates or doing any boiling. So I don't need any of that stuff. But I wanted to show you real quick. I'm just taking this hibiscus and I'm crunching it down as far as I can. Some pieces won't want to break apart enough and you just got to kind of leave those out because they end up too three dimensional. Now I've never used the hibiscus before. Here it is. Pop some on here. So I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen with it. I'm not going to use it on every page just in case it's eh, not so great. But I definitely want to give it a shot. 
and then I'm just continuing back and forth. Now my thought is to do paper in between the fabric and the leaves just to kind of stabilize everything. I'm going to give this paper another good dousing with alum water. And then a tip on spraying your paper, whenever I'm doing dye or eco dyeing, any kind, I spray one side. This paper has a tendency to curl if one side is dry, of course, you know what I'm saying? So I always just spray it, flip it, and spray it with alum first. Very first thing I do, every page, all the time. Okay, so let's throw a little more in here since I've got gotcha. Now you can do this on the page first, or you can put the leaves down and then put it on the page around the leaf. So you've got options. Just play with it and mess around. Look at this half-eaten leaf here. Now these can be good or bad. At, sometimes they print really cool, but you can't tell it's a leaf. So, but we're going to put it in because it's pretty no matter what. And I've just got an assortment over here. And what I like to do is I have a bunch of leaves on my table just loose to my left so that I can just reach over and grab whatever I can get my hands on and pop them in. I have quite a number of leaves, so I am going to really fill these pages up like this. Okay, so I'll be back to bundle this all up and then we'll do the die as well. Okay, so I've got this last page done here and what I'm going to do is just give this a good soaking on one side and of course flip it as always. Go ahead and soak this side too while I'm at it. Now this is my very first time doing this, so if I kind of flop around, bear with me. Okay, so I've got my dowel and this is 10 inches long and then of course my paper is 8.5 by 11. So I'm going to grab a hold of this and roll it up like a burrito, the lady said. <laughs> I love YouTube. Okay, something I'm noticing right off the bat is the paper is like slipping. You know how you fold a big signature? That's what's happening. It's like coming out. So there's something to be aware of. That's going to create a bunch of borders. See what I'm talking about right here. There it is. But that's okay, we're just going to roll with it. Now, I've got some baker's twine cut and ready to go. I just did a few pieces here. And um, this I'm going to do in a way that I've never done it before. This I'm going to steam. So I'm very interested to see how that goes. And I've got a big roasting pan. I don't have like the um, hold steamer pan to go in it. Um, the gal said to just put some water in the bottom, like an inch or so. I'm gonna do, make sure and watch my water and make sure that it doesn't dry out because, and I am gonna put a lid on this. I should have cut my twine longer too because this piece is not, you want to be able to wrap it around a couple times at least in order to really get that tighter. I'm so winging this. I'm going to put a couple more pieces of twine on the ends just because I want it to be really, really tight. By the way, if you can get gloves that actually fit your hands, use them because generic one-size-fits-all gloves are such a bummer. They are really hard to work in. For me, these are a pain. So that's a pro tip right there. Okay, so there's my bundle. Here's this gigantic monster roasting pan I'm going to use for this. 
And I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to make, ooh, I'm going to have to find a way to keep those up. So make sure you measure your pan. I should have had these be another couple inches longer on these dowels. And you can use sticks too. You just don't want to use plastic. I, I probably wouldn't use plastic just because you've, you're cooking it. So I would try to, oh, that's just going to move. But you're going to want to pin them in such a way that they all kind of hold each other up and then keep an eye on them and just, I'm just going to use tongs. I have some tongs that I use for um, bagging up weed, really thorny weeds so I don't have to touch them. So I'll use those. Of course, I wouldn't use my cooking tongs. <laughs> I just feel like it has to be said. So let me go ahead and get the next batch ready and I'll show you the dye. So real quick, I went ahead and put this water in. This is how much I'm using. And I am not going to add any vinegar to this because this is steaming. So I think that the alum water that I sprayed and soaked everything in is going to be sufficient enough for this. And if it's not, we'll find out. So I just wanted to let you, I wanted to go ahead and address that with you and I'll be back. Okay, finally we have gotten to the dye segment of the video. So I'm going to do another piece of fabric here. And silly me, I forgot to cut the salvaged edge off of this, but I'm just going to dye it. I don't care. I'll use it on journals or whatever. It'll be fine. <laughs> Plus less waste. So I'm going to start off with a piece of paper. Now this is what I always do when I eco dye. Here I've got my rusty dye. It's looking pretty dark. So I'm hoping it's not too, too dark, but it sure is looking pretty dark. And I didn't even put that much dye in. I did two to one orange, two parts of uh, the orange, like I said, to one part dark brown. And I only did like, oh my gosh, I probably did 15% of the orange and then seven and a half percent of the dark brown. So here's what I do. I squirt both sides of the paper because it curls up on you if you don't. And then I take the color that I want dominant in the kit and I just coat it completely with a paintbrush. This is an old chip brush. You can get these in the paint section of pretty much any paint store. Walmart carries them, and they're exceptional. And I use them over and over again. And I have ones that are really black like this. These are my eco-dyeing brushes. So another way to get a lot of really nice texture I've found is you've got your dye down. Oh, I like this. I hope this color works out the way I want. I'm really looking for a rust, a deep rust. So now you can just give a tiny squirt of the alum and it tends to give you some really beautiful texture I found. And then you want to stack your leaves or whatever you're putting on flowers, whatever. Now I pull, I try not to pull the stem completely off, but I do pull the nib on the end off almost all the time because it's three dimensional and it's going to interfere with the leaves being able to suction to the page. You get much better prints when the leaves suction all the way down. So that's why I'm doing that. See this little nib here. And then I've got my little bucket here. It's got some leaves in it, but I just keep tossing them in here. And then I put all this out in the yard. I don't like to throw it in the trash. I want to put it back in nature. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just feel like it's a matter of respect. I don't know. This feels like the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Okay, so now here's my page. I've got my botanicals down, and I'm not going to add any herbs to this. Oh, maybe. Let's do a little pinch of chamomile. I don't want to do any hibiscus because the hibiscus is so blue. It comes out so blue. And I went ahead and cleaned this, my kitty litter tub out too, so that I would not get blue in this kit. Now what you can do on top of this is take your dye 
and just give it some drips here and there and this will add dimension and depth and if you're using different colors you can always do this with other colors and then you can even come in if you want to get fancy and throw a few more drops of the alum on top of that. Now I'm going to do this fabric. So I've got this first page established here. Also, I grabbed a pair of tweezers because the leaves are sticking to my gloves a lot. So tweezers are really handy for this process. And of course, you're going to want paper, a uh, couple paper towels handy because your hands get really mucky doing this and you don't want to you just need paper towels you know you know like right now I push that down now I've got some orange dye and I really don't want to get dye everywhere I realize this is so messy <laughs> it's incredibly messy this art medium but you can have a little control over cleanliness so now I'm just spraying this down entirely with the alum water of Kellos Oh my gosh, I am excited about this rust color and this is what happens. I get all excited and I don't always, sometimes it's like, oh, and then when I see the results, it's incredible. And then other times I see the results and it's not so incredible. But this is looking promising. I've been trying to get this color, this rust color, and it's been somewhat eluding me shall we say and I think I've got it dialed in pretty good this time now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bundle in next to the one I just did and this is probably going to drip this rust dye into the pan and I'm just going to let what happens happen if it ends up um, kind of bleeding up into the other kit well so be it that's fine with me so these are those little nibs of course but I like to keep the stem now the stems can be really three-dimensional if they're really bad you can either take a pair of pliers and flatten them out with a pair of flat nose pliers or you can just snap them off entirely so those are really your only choices now this is the fabric so I'm going to go ahead and squirt some more alum and let's go ahead and just drip this. Okay, so now you know how I do the dye. I'm going to go ahead and get this kit all together and get these steamed. I'm going to steam everything for four hours. Okay, guys, just to say it for this time too. Now I've got, this is the fabric hanging out here. And what I do here now when I start stacking I spray, I spray just to flatten it and I want to put a piece of paper in between every layer of fabric as I accordion fold this fabric throughout because I want to give the fabric some stability. I don't know why, it just feels like the right thing to do. It may not be but you got to start somewhere so <laughs> this just feels like a good idea and then we'll be able to see how this comes out so you can this is what I like to do a lot just to get, if I'm going to do a dyed kit, I want color because it, when you get the white areas, sometimes it makes the paper look not so good. So if I'm going to do dye, I'm going to go all the way. Now you could do, I'd like to do a kit and I probably will do just a spattered kit or you just give it some spatter, you know, so that you do have big white areas and it looks very intentional. So I flipped that over and suctioned it down to the leaves and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cover this page here too. And then I'm going to go ahead and do what I always do, just put the botanicals on, spray a little bit more alum. But I wanted to show you, I just think putting these papers in between is going to be the best way to go. And you know, we'll see, time will tell, results will tell us all. Okay guys, so here's these three bundles all rolled up and ready to go. So uh, this one is the nothing, this one is hibiscus and chamomile, and this one of course is our rust dye. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with just the plain one here. 
I was so pleasantly surprised because I gotta tell you now, I get I collect my leaves in Ziploc baggies in the summertime for eco dyeing, and then I keep a squirt bottle, like I've said, and I squirt inside the baggie of leaves, and then I push all the air out and seal it shut. And then when I get it home, I put it in a miniature dish tub in my fridge. And I have found this summer that I am able to keep those leaves they have lasted up to like seven weeks in my fridge without getting moldy or having problems so um, when you're eco dying you can just put them in the fridge and that buys you a whole bunch of time well I went through all of mine thinking I just had enough to freeze for jelly printing and stuff like that for the winter Venetian plaster and um, I had a quite an abundance and my buddy Cheryl really wanted to see the dye like I said so I was able to go ahead and do that this time around so I'm really glad that that all worked out and then I ended up with plenty of winter leaves to uh, last through the winter now what I do with the winter leaves is I just make sure that the leaves are still in the big court size I use quart size Ziploc baggies and I make sure they're moist and I make sure they're flat I take them all out of the baggie I flatten them and stack them together and then I put them back in moist and stacked flat and then I do the same thing I close the Ziploc baggie really tight and then I um, put it in the freezer in a Tupperware so that I can stack food or whatever on it and because if you put your leaf baggies in the freezer uh, without the protection of a Tupperware of course they're gonna run the risk of getting smashed all to smithereens so what I did with these um, I made the first one we made this first one and I put it in that big deep pan I showed you and then I started steaming it right away and covered the top this steam process I only put like an inch of water in the bottom of the pan as you saw and you don't have to go over low because um, low on your stove will get it plenty hot um, I was even having a little trouble yesterday with the water boiling a bit so I was really having to adjust my temperature and keep it really low and then what I did I steamed them for four and a half hours I did have to put a little extra water in about halfway through so you want to keep an eye on that water level because it's so low and then I I took all these and I put them on a cookie sheet and I stuck them in my oven at just 200 degrees very low for 20 minutes in an attempt to kind of heat set the uh, leaf print so let's see if it worked oh my goodness I'm so excited and the video that I learned this technique from is listed below in the description box and it's very quick much quicker than mine so I invite you to check that out as well so already we're getting really nice results I'm so excited to see this kit look at that very natural this roll so I buy these at the Dollar Tree and I always have this off to the right over here just to capture all of my botanicals and now that you've seen that I'll bring you in a bit oh my goodness this is exciting woohoo okay so there's my little dowel those are very handy I think I like that but I didn't get any prints at all on these you really have to have your paper so tight I want to say too oh look at that little one came out beautiful look at that um, in if you got to watch black pearls eco dye kits one and two um, I uh, noticed that the maple leaves I had used a lot of autumn maple leaves and I had noticed that I got different colors from them so I put quite a few autumn leaves in here and I'm really hoping to get some nice prints here's that side this video is just going to be longer because I really want to show the results of this 
kind of awkward because the pages are rolled up. Oh my goodness. And then these are the um, cottonwood tree leaves. And I scooped up a bunch of these the other day off the ground because they were all autumn-y and um, still moist on the ground. And I'm really surprised that that print didn't come out a little bit better, but this side. So once again, you're gonna get a mirror image of the pages you stack together. And this side printed beautifully. And then look, I got a little bit of bleed. I knew that was gonna happen from the rust dye. So really interesting results doing it this way, steaming it. Now the gal in the video that I watched, um, she, uh, soaked her paper in alum water and then she also soaked her leaves in alum water and I took a shortcut and I may pay dearly for that because I might have gotten better prints had I not done that. I kind of just, I sprayed mine as you saw and didn't soak them so it might be worth it to, it's definitely worth it to watch her video and it might very well be worth it to do it the way she did it. She soaked everything so might just be worth a try but still pretty good results. Look at that and then I got the bleed of the rest in there to give it a little extra color. Very interesting way of doing it. And then of course you don't have to worry about great marks this way either. So quite a bit of prints, some silhouettes. I'm really excited to see how the dye kit came out if the steaming um, proved to be a favorable way to do the dyes. Oh, that's fun. I was really hoping for bold and bright color out of some of the maples and I'm not seeing it yet. That's okay, that's an okay page. Now these are all face down here. So of course the vein side for me always, I always get better results like I always say. And these are all vein side down. I tried to be really consistent and do all, I didn't mix up the vein side this time because I tend to mix it up and I don't always get great results from that. So you just gotta try different stuff. Wowie, okay, this page here is all vein. This is the um, top side without the veins on it. And I got some okay prints on here. Pretty nice. There's some nice elements on this page. Very interesting. It's just so neat. And it'll be really exciting to get these all dried and ironed. Um, I can do a video on these dried and ironed, but it, I'm just gonna make it a separate video because this one's already gonna be so long. Look at that. So to avoid this, of course, you can just not put it in with a dye batch. Oh, wowee, wowee, okay. Well, that did not give me much at all there. See if these are any good over here. And of course I didn't put feathers in here because the feathers of course have no um, blood, you know, so to speak. They don't have like the botanical juices that come out on the page. So I didn't really see any reason to put them in. That's a little different. Here's this side. This side's much better, I think. I love this. I love the brown of this maple. Wow. There's some great workable stuff in here for sure. That's much nicer, the vein side of that. And I did not count my pages like I normally do. I took a stack, I cut them down to eight and a half by 11, and I used up all the pages that I had. So I do not know how many at this point. Once I get them all ironed up, then I'll know. There's that side. Quite interesting, much more, um, traditional eco dye results out of this kit. Oh, that came out pretty neat. It's 
just so fun. I love eco dyeing, but I really am ready to move on. So I said I was done and here I am doing it again. That's funny. That's kind of a neat page. I love this yellow over here. This is the grapevine leaf. They print so amazing. And I'm not sure what these are. There are some species of maple, I believe. I'm just not sure. And then this kit, I did some leaves on the outside. Um, so I got a little marking from the twine. I was actually kind of hoping for that. It's pretty faint, but it's still fun. So, okay, there's that kit done and I will be right back to do the next. Now, both of these kits have that fabric, that cotton fabric in them. And this was a missed opportunity when I put this kit together. I should have put some leaves on this inside page. So uh, I kind of missed the boat on that, but you don't have to. This is all right, but nothing really happening much there. Now, this is going to be a hot mess because there's a lot of hibiscus and um, uh, la, 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 chamomile in here. So I think a lot of this yellow is coming from the chamomile. This page, not a lot happening. Let's see what we can get further in. Oh, it's such a bummer when these don't print completely. This is the one where I think I put a lot of the autumn colored um, maple in. These little guys were pretty autumn colored. Like this one got some red in it. That's interesting. I'm going to try to turn this kit around here. I think it's probably going to be, who knows? I think this is going to be right side up. I'm just not sure. So interesting, I like how the rust color leached up on that bottom side. And I did think about flipping this and getting it on both ends and now I wish I would have done that. So there's another way that you can get some really fun color in these. That's an interesting page. The hibiscus came out even more faded in the steaming process than it did in the boiling. Oh, and you know, I think that purple we saw on that maple leaf was from the hibiscus because look, I got some purple right there and I had just wiped hibiscus off. So kind of interesting. I think a problem with this kit right here is I don't know that I got it tight enough. And the fact that I have fabric in here might be part of the issue. I might not have been able to get the paper tight enough due to having fabric in here. So um, next season, I might just go ahead and try doing um, paper and fabric in separate kits. So I just don't know. The... Um, Chamomile definitely printed with oranges and yellows. So that's very interesting to know. I would almost next time just put, um, maybe put some chamomile tea bags in instead of having it all loose, maybe just put chamomile tea bags in the water, the steam water at the bottom. So I don't know, it's worth a try for sure. Oh, interesting texture, but not a lot going on as far as leaf prints. That's kind of disappointing to me right there. Definitely messy for sure. <laughs> but I definitely want to find a way to get the leaves tighter, to get the whole bundle tighter. And I think really getting the fabric separated out is the way to go. It just softens everything and I think that affects the prints. Educated guess, but still just a guess. Okay, half of that came out really nice. I like that. Just a really fun experiment. So here's all this chamomile. It's really messy doing it this way, but you probably can't get the color I got if you don't. 
I'm thinking if you just put tea bags in the bath, you're going to get the edges and maybe nothing else. So not, I'm not really all that happy with this kit here. It's, it's fun. I just really do think that the fabric probably playing a part here. No leaf prints to speak of on this fabric so far. That's kind of disappointing. It's fun to do this though. I always like to do this stuff because I like to learn. To learn what works and what doesn't. Oh, that hibiscus really dyed this fabric a beautiful deep pink color there. I'm gonna take this fabric outside and give it a good shake before I rinse. I always keep a little screen in my sink too because I'm on septic and no matter what your system is, it's always good to tr try to keep all this stuff out of your drain. Very beautiful coloring on this fabric, but leaf prints, not so much yet. That might change, but really pretty coloring. Let's see how this page came out. So yeah, oh, look at that lovely one. That's pretty. So yet another way of doing eco dyeing. I, th I like the steamed way and I like rolling because I don't have to worry about great marks, but you've got to have it so, so tight to get those leaves to really print. And that's the challenge with this way of doing it. Well, that's a pretty fun page as far as color goes. With some coffee staining, this could really be a nice grunge background sheet for artwork. The fabric coloring is gorgeous. I love the coloring. Look at that. And I wish I would have flipped this and got the orange rust borders on both sides, but just beautiful. No prints though. Which it's, it's, I have not tried to do a bunch of fabric printing with eco dyeing. I might try to do some more of that uh, next season, but Based on what I've learned here with this right here, I will separate the fabric from the paper. I'll just do a fabric kit and a paper kit. I think heat setting this in the oven helped. I don't know. I really don't know that it did, but it was worth a shot. Heat setting tends to work with most things, so I figured it would work with this as well. So I wish I would have put this vein side because I didn't get the print on the fabric. This leaf would have been much better served if I would have put the veining side down on the paper, but I still got this beautiful yellow coloring from it. None of these printed on the fabric, so that was kind of a waste, but beautiful coloring still. I'm definitely excited about the coloring, and I'm excited to see that the chamomile really does uh, bring some beautiful yellows into the mix. Even I think these oranges are from the chamomile as well. Very messy, very messy. And then a lot of pink from the hibiscus by steaming it. Really a different kit. Different than anything I've done. Oh, extremely messy. <laughs> okay, the coloring on this. I like it. And I will show it to you all dried and ironed. All right, here's one of those half-eaten grapevine leaves. Oh, that print came out pretty beautiful. Interesting coloring from the hibiscus. A lot of pieces really came out true to their color. I guess the boiling process just really takes that uh, pinkish burgundy color away because I have not gotten that color, this pinkish stuff here. I haven't gotten that boiling. So there's an interesting little treasure. Okay. 
huh? Once again, I put all the vein sides to the fabric, hoping to get prints on the fabric and didn't work so well, but that's a pretty page. It's different, very different. I like that it's mostly natural anyway, except for this up here. Now, um, here, another difference between the Canson mixed media versus the modern masters mixed media pages. This is Canson. I could rub on Canson like I am and really be rough with it. And the paper, it takes a lot to get the paper to start rubbing and rolling. But the master's touch really does start to break down quicker. So I do like the Canson better. I think it just holds up better. Oh, no leaf prints on this fabric. but still some beautiful coloring. It'll be nice to have it all rinsed and dried and ironed and then I can show you exactly how it came out. Okay, ooh, look at that. These grapevine leaves are so amazing when it comes to eco dyeing, steamed or boiled. It works both ways. All right, what a messy kit. <laughs> Here's some fun hibiscus blobs. So you kind of want to be careful of blobbing your herbs because they definitely kind of came out a little weird on this sheet. I'm not sure if I like this. Here's an interesting sheet. And I didn't see a lot of the colors. Now I'm thinking autumn. Um, colored leaves. Now I know that the tree sprigs don't work really well, but the maple tree leaves worked beautifully in the black pearl kits. Um, these right here and they did not work in this. So I'm thinking if you wait until these have autumn colors on them and then eco dye them the boiling way that you're going to get some amazing color because I got amazing color out of them in the black pearl kits and they were all just starting to change color. So here's this fabric. Okay, so I got this one all undone and I'm going to go ahead and keep this string. I have a lot of tie dyeing experience, so I do know that this string, when I go to use it again, this is going to uh, affect whatever I tie it with. So just know if you've got dye on your twine and you want to reuse it, it's going to leach into whatever you tie down. Okay. So this I'm very excited about. Look at that color. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wish I would have just done all paper, but I pr it's probably too soon to say that. Uh, okay, now this one, I put leaves on that inner sheet and look at that. What a good thing I did by doing that. So go ahead and put leaves all the way up to even the one that you're uh, rolling, even the sheet that you're rolling. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yes. Quite nice prints and I'll flip this kit too. Um, okay, this is also, I can rinse this but it's probably going to translate. It's going to leach into whatever I use if I don't really get it completely rinsed off. So let's flip this. I'm going to shake everything outside as much as I can. Paper and fabric alike. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see this fabric. Oh, thank you, buddy, Cheryl, for asking to see this because it looks like dye works really well steamed. <laughs> I got to learn something new by saying yes to that request. So thank you, Cheryl. Oh my, you guys. This is the color that I really wanted out of this. And I would love to even see some deep red with this, the I'm afraid my red dye, I, I didn't try any red because I'm so afraid it's just going to turn pink. 
but I think it's worth a shot. I, you know I'm going to end up doing some dye next year. You just know I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, I have to look at these prints. They are incredible. Whoa. So, if you don't want any great marks at all and you want dyed eco dyes, you can roll and steam your eco dyes. Look at this coloring. Wow, we. Oh, I am really, really impressed with this. Almost makes me wish that the season wasn't over, but it is. <laughs> Now, um, I haven't really eco dye. I've done a tiny bit of eco dyeing with frozen leaves. I have done it and I have succeeded. And I know that Susan Taylor Brown has done it a lot and she always gets phenomenal results from her eco dyeing. So you absolutely can freeze your leaves and use them again. And you know, it's funny, I was walking my dogs this morning and there's all kinds of aspen leaves on the ground and they're wet from the last snow. So, oh my gosh, I might do one last steam with some aspens. I might do it. Got the pages sticking together a tiny bit and I think that came from these edges got dry from heat setting it in the oven. Look at that. These cottonwood tree leaves prove to be really nice printing leaves as well. This kit might have to be pumpkin spice four, number four, or warm cider, number two. I will link these below if you're interested in having them. Since I don't have them ready yet, of course they'll be ready by the time I put this out. I hope they should be. Um, that way you can get them and they'll all be named and linked just like always. Look at these results. Oh my gosh. I Here, now we're getting to the fabric. I really want to see this fabric. So I had a little leftover fabric and I folded it over and I was wondering how it was going to print. And I really like this graphicness of having this line here and having these partially hidden and then these showing up. What a fun page that is. This is opening up a whole new world of eco dyeing for everybody here. This is really something. I got a bit of a print. Maybe adding dye to the fabric will help make it print. Oh look, I got a silhouette. Got another silhouette, another silhouette. Let's see what we have in here. I knew I put a big leaf. Look, it's a print. Now I am going to rinse this because there's excess dye in here. So I may lose these prints a little bit, but it is dye and it is treated with alum. So it should retain most of its color. Wow, we you guys. There's some leaf prints on this fabric this time with that dye. Oh my goodness. I am excited to do more of this. Ugh. So I love questions and I love requests. And if you request something and I don't do it or I don't respond, it's because I've got a full lineup of stuff coming. So that's the only reason I wouldn't honor a request or like the season was so close to being over. I didn't think I was gonna be able to pull it off, but lo and behold, we were able to do it. So please don't hesitate to request stuff. I might not be able to get to it right away, but I read each and every comment on each and every video. It's very important to me to um, hear you guys and see what you have to say and what you like and all that good stuff. Look at that, oh my gosh. I hope these stay as strong as they are, but I fear I might lose some of it when I rinse. And I, you have to rinse the dyed stuff, you just have to. 
because you don't want it rubbing off on people's hands if you make a journal cover and whatnot. These leaf sprigs are really printing beautifully and I'm really excited about this mix. So I did a two to one of the sunshine orange and dark brown. So you can mix as much as you want. I didn't even mix that much like I said earlier. You can mix as much as you want of this, but the two to one ratio is going to give you this really lovely burnt orange color. Okay, now we've got the back side of these. Pretty nice results there. Okay, look at this fabric, more prints. I would love to be able to get this in a bunch of different colors next season. And you know I will, you know I'm gonna do it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do, 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 because I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff this winter with these. Lots of art projects. Oh my gosh. Just amazing. The steaming process with the dye is really amazing. I was kind of not happy with the other two kits. Not as happy as I am with this one. So I think I'm just going to have to do some more experimenting. I think maybe soaking my paper like she did is a good idea. Look at that. How fun. And maybe soaking my leaves a little bit in alum water. I get sometimes I'm just a lazy crafter and I don't want to work that hard. <laughs> but if I know I'm going to get awesome results, then I'm definitely willing to work harder. <laughs> I've just gotten so many good results by not having to work too hard. This fabric piece is incredible. I cannot wait to do more of the fabric. Oh, look at that. I might just do some spattered fabric this winter and steam it because I can easily do that if I don't do the botanicals because I really don't have the botanicals to spare. Look at that. But it would be fun just to get some really beautifully colored um, fabric and then spraying and squirting the alum always adds really nice texture too. I'm not seeing a ton of it in this kit but these a lot of these pages were butted up to the fabric so that probably had a tendency to smooth and blend the color a little bit better I'm guessing. <laughs> Just a guess. Wow this fabric is really really something. I'm excited. I'm going to get this all rinsed up and ironed up so that you can see it all dried and ironed just like always. And then we're down to our last sheet here. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Cheryl. We ended up with some treasures. We hunted up some more treasures. I put a tiny bit of chamomile in this kit in this just the tiniest bit and I don't really see anything from it. I'm sure the rest is really overpowering it. So this is super dry right here from being heat set in the oven this half and all of my eco dyes fade so this really intense rust color may lighten up significantly once these are dried and ironed. This is a fun little graphic page. So you get the eco dyeing here and then the tie marks here. Pretty fun. Okay, well, thank you so much for checking this out with me. And I'm going to do, this is going to be part one. And I'm going to do part two to show you everything dried and ironed, just so that this video is not going to take forever. But I'm going to put them out on the same day. Boom, boom. Okay, so I'll see you in part two.